All right, guys, it is time for the moment everyone's been waiting for. This is the Spiral One tier list, but not just any tier list. We are going over every enemy in this entire game and talking about how good they are, how bad they are, how much they affect me emotionally, how much they ruined my childhood and how many nightmares they gave me growing up. So if you have any special stories with any of these enemies or they gave you just a complete, they just completely terrorized your childhood or ruined your life. I know you guys might be talking about some of these guys like the fraud, like these butt guys or these fucking spiders, dude. So we're going to get into all that today. If you have any stories like that, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Um, I fucking love you. So without further ado, let's just go from the very tippy top here. We got the little monkey banana boy here from uh, uh, what level is this? Metalhead. So the banana boys are they're kind of cute. I'll give them I'll give them cute points, you know. So if I were to put them anywhere on the tier list, I don't dislike them. But one thing that I hate about them is that they're throwing banana projectile. If you don't get to them in time, they will fucking basically hit you with it. Um, the, but it doesn't home in. So none of the attacks in this game home in. So um, the bananas can be annoying, especially if you have like a little error. They'll just you'll just get punished really hard. The knockback from those bananas is like a lot. So um, these guys are usually not a problem, but when they are, they're like kind of extra annoying. Um, I'm going to put them in a, in a solid B tier just because they're cute and they're not that bad. Solid B tier for the banana boys. And uh, OK, next up, we got the I'm just going to blow through these. All right, because we got plenty of enemies to get through here. All right. We got the metal guys from uh, Magic Crafters. Um, these are the guys that uh, they don't make noise, but they go like, ow, when you fucking hit them. They're really weird. I they, these enemies always like sort of mystified me as a kid. I, ca I can't even really explain it. Um, it's like you, you're not sure whether they're wizards or like creatures or norks. They're like some weird hybrid of all those things. So they kind of make me feel a little uneasy because it's like I don't really know what they are really. And uh, they make a weird noise, but they don't make any noise. They don't like actually make, have any idle noises. Like the other wizards in, in Magic Crafters are like, wow, wow, wow. But these guys are just like, they don't say anything. And then they're just like, ow, when they die. They're just weird. Um, these are not my favorite guys, but... They're not like bad either. I'm gonna give these guys a D tier. I'm not a fan of them. Uh, personally, they kind of make me a little uneasy if I'm being honest. Next up, we got the metal guys from Jock. Uh, these guys are definitely on some nightmare fuel. They're definitely have a little bit of nightmare fuel, I will say. Not a lot, but a little bit of nightmare fuel, uh, especially in Jock. These guys plus like the, um, plus like Jock himself with like the, <laughs> like the smiley face, it's just, uh, these enemies are a little weird, but to be fair, in Jock, it's almost like kind of a nightmare-esque, you know, Dreamweavers level, so they are appropriate for the level. I, and one thing that's really annoying about these guys is that they're almost always on platforms, and so why, the reason that's annoying is because when you charge into them, sometimes they'll push you off to the side. Usually, you'll, you'll be trying to land on the platform that they're on, but if you don't hit them perfectly centered, you'll actually fall off the side of the platform, which is super fucking annoying and uh, wastes time in the speedrun, so... I'm going to put these guys a little lower. We're gonna, I'll put these guys D tier as well. They, these these guys could definitely be argued for E tier or, or D, I might put them down to E tier actually. Honestly, easy E tier. Those guys are, these guys kind of suck if I'm being honest, uh, but they're not that bad. D tier, I'm gonna give them a D tier just cause they're not that bad. All right, now these fucking spiders here, please leave a, a fucking post right here. Leave a post if you fucking, hate these spiders if these spiders have ruined your entire childhood like absolutely found their way into the deep recesses of your nostalgic mind just to haunt you later on in your nightmares as a something 20 something year old you know freaking trying to get through college and these guys are still terrorizing you in your dreams if that's the case for you then i want you to know it's the same thing for me i have to look at these fuckers every day um these in the speed running sense they fucking get in your way all the time because you rely on their cycles to be perfect in the actual run of this game of spiral one so if you fuck up even a little bit these spiders are going to fuck you over in turn and um even when you do hit them they have really wonky hitboxes and they're just a fucking pain in every sense of the word like in terms of aesthetics execution like effect on your psyche as a player these guys are just all bad <laughs> so for that i give them a fucking f tier i fucking hate these guys these are some of the worst enemies in the entire game undoubtedly all right now here we got the turtles right here yeah a quick f tier you polar puts them in the s tier what a fucking guy all right so we got the fucking doggy uh what is he called turtles right here now i will say they are kind of cute i give them bonus points for looking kind of cute 
but these are actually some of the hardest enemies in the game to actually efficiently kill because if you don't bait out their shots, you have to be literally frame perfect in your approach, not frame perfect, but you have to be perfect in your approach at them. You can't like zigzag. You can't be like, oh, almost gonna hit them. If you are like, have the, if they can smell the fear on you, they will hit you. Just like the frogs in Misty Bog. If, if you are even hesitating, like the smallest amount, they will completely fuck you. And the thing about it is when they hit you, you'll be like right in front of them, charging towards them. So what happens is it preserves the momentum when you hit. And so you'll fly up over them as you're doing the damage animation. And so it just wastes a ton of time. These guys are total fucking assholes. I'm gonna put them in the F tier as well. I fucking hate these guys. Maybe E tier because they're cute, but honestly, I'm keeping the F tier. The cuteness does not redeem their shitty qualities about how fucking annoying they are. These are easily, if I were to pick like a most annoying enemy in the game, it'd probably be these turtles. They got a special reward for that. Now we got the booty bandits. We got the booty boys in fucking peacekeepers, dude. Everybody loves these guys. Everybody loves the booty boys. Also, I'm gonna turn this music down slightly, but yeah, everyone loves the fucking booty guys. I'm gonna probably put them on, uh, on what's it called? Uh, I gotta put, they're iconic. They're iconic, okay, look. Tell me, like, every time, like, every time you play this game growing up, or you tell your friend about Spyro, you know, or something like that, it's like, oh, well, did you know about those enemies that, like, show you their ass in, an, in a kid's game? Like, whoa, this was like at a time that like nudity was not like a thing in games. So the fact that they got away with this literal screenshot, you know, in the fucking game and didn't have to change the, they didn't have to change these guys' character design is like, honestly, such a blessing for all of us. We get to look at their terrible, look at that. It's not even, it's, there's not even more than one polygon on their ass. It's literally just a texture of an ass crack. It looks like he's got a funky like mud butt case of the fucking runs, dude. Like it's a fucking joke. These guys are legendary. S tier. This girl got a one polygon. If you're if you're ever insecure about uh, your butt, just know that you'll never have as flat of an ass as these guys. These guys have like an anti ass. Okay, we have the balloon guys from Lofty. These are the guys that float up and down off the side of the platforms, like over the void. And um, they're not really much of a threat and they are pretty chonky and kind of cute. These guys get cute points for sure. Um, but they are, all, they are also kind of annoying in a speedrunning sense because you have to be on the right cycle with them. Usually it's not bad, but it's that one guy um, off to the side of Turkey Island that always gives you trouble after the first whirlwind. Fucking hate that guy. Um, also when you miss one of these guys or if you have any awkward execution on them, you're usually gonna end up dying, you know, to some stupid shit. So, Oh, another thing that can happen is if they smack you, which is rare, but if they smack you and you're charging like anywhere near the edge, you will continue that momentum right off the edge and you'll fucking die for that. That's happened to me many dozens of times, hundreds maybe. I'm giving them a C tier. I'm gonna put them right in the middle. I don't, I don't like them, I, but they do get some redeeming qualities just for being fat, chonky, cute bitches. C tier. No, arguably D tier, but I'll, I'll put them in C tier. C tier. Mmm. All right, we got the little uh, banana. We, these, are, these are basically the same guys as this, just without the um, the metal. Like the ones here at the beginning of B tier are the um, the metalhead ones, and then this is the treetops one. I gotta say, I prefer the treetops ones if I had to pick. So I'm gonna put them slightly ahead of the metalhead ones. The metalhead ones look like kind of fucked up. Like look at that guy's mouth. I mean, they all look pretty much every game, every enemy in this game looks fucked up, but. I, th I think the treetop ones are just like marginally cuter than the uh, metalhead ones. So I, they, they get they're same tier, but just a little higher. Okay, these big I call these guys yellow keks, <laughs> the big yellow fucks. <laughs> these guys are so stoned. In fact, I actually really like these guys because you'd think they'd have like really big ass hitboxes because they're so giant, but they really don't. They have pretty small. You can like kind of charge through their hitbox or their character model because the hitbox is so small. Um, and they have, a, they have a few, one of the few enemies in this game that actually varies throughout the level. Um, sometimes they'll do a body slam, sometimes they'll smack you in the face, sometimes they'll just roar at you. And so I like that there's like variance to this enemy, that's not a really a common thing in this game at all. So for that, I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know about A tier, what do you guys say to A tier? I don't know about A tier. Look, I'll, I'll put them in the bottom of A tier for now, just because they have some cool things about them and they're funny looking, but they are kind of nightmare fuel and they are also kind of annoying at times, so they're definitely not S tier. If they're like somewhere between A and B tier, I would say. I'm reading the chat here. 
roar. <laughs> yeah, they can be annoying for sure, Nova, for sure. All right, so we got these guys right here. Now, these are t more fat, chonky boys. As you guys know, I have an affinity for the cute, fat, chonky enemies in this game. Um, these guys, this particular guy doesn't really do much. There's two of these in um, Dark Hollow, or three of them. And they don't really do anything. They have no real effect. I'm putting him C tier with it. I I'm gonna let him be with his other chonky boyfriend, you know? They're just a cute little happy family. Let him be. Let him hang out in the C tier together. They deserve it. All right, we got these electro fucks. This fucking guy from uh, Treetop, er, Terrace Village. This guy from Terrace Village is a fucking asshole. Um, if you don't, the thing is, is in Terrace Village, you want to flame charge these guys from as far, far away as possible. So that way their gem sprouts out quickly and you can move quickly to grab it. You can't flame charge them. So that's immediate minus points for that. This is one of the few enemies in the game you cannot flame charge. Secondly, if you flame them from far away, but you miss, you will get punished for that. You will get zapped and he'll punch you into the air with the zap with the momentum conservation. It's just, just like with the turtles. These guys are very annoying, very annoying. Um, they're not hard. They're just really annoying if you don't do them correctly. So I'm gonna put them D tier, low D tier, maybe even E tier. I'm gonna go E tier with these guys, to be honest. These guys suck, I don't like them. All right, we got the wizards. We got the fucking wizards. These are the wizards in, it looks like these are the Haunted Tower skin wizards, which is honestly, these are the swaggiest um, variant on the wizards. Uh, there's also the Magic Crafters ones, which are basically the same, there's just a different skin. Um, but this one definitely gets swag points from me. And it, these are these guys are really cool because you can do something called the wizard proxy off of them, where you actually, during their damage, an, during their animation where they zap you, um, you can glide into them and get a super big bounce. So a lot of like strats in the various spiral one speedruns uh, rely on wizard proxies. So these guys are really clutch actually in the speedrun, and um, they add a lot of cool like glitchy, you know, you could say depth to just playing this game and they're not that bad. Yeah, the thing that is bad about them is the continuity with their hitboxes. Their hitboxes actually shift with their movements and um, it, the hitbox doesn't always align with their character model. So you'll charge right through them sometimes and you don't get the kill, which is really annoying. Um, I'm gonna go A tier. I'm gonna go A tier just because of wizard proxy and for the drip on this particular Haunted Towers one. Definitely A tier for those guys. I might demote the yellow kex underneath the wizard. The wizards are almost S tier, almost S tier. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna put the wizards in the S tier. The wizards are tight because if it weren't for wizard proxy, it definitely, wizard proxy adds so much to the game as a speed run. I think, I think they deserve S tier personally. Nah, A tier, A tier just cause of the shitty hitboxes. A tier, A tier final answer. Okay. Now next up we got the hogs. These are the fucking hogs and misty bog. Oh god, these guys are fucking bitches. These guys are so annoying. They're at, these are these enemies are some of the hardest enemies in the entire game to flame charge. Um, the reason for that is because you have to get really close to them and move off to the side of them in order to make the gem home in from a flame charge. You have to get very close to them and move off to the side as you flame them. But the thing is, is they charge at you in like a a way that's not always like going to be the same way every time. So you have to have mega crazy big dick reaction skills with these guys to like assess how they're charging at you. And they charge fast too. They don't, it's not like they're coming at you slowly. They're like zooming across the, once they fucking uh, heat sequel, heat, heat seeking missile lock onto your shit, heat sequel your ass. They're fucking coming at you like a fucking uh, freight train. So these guys are going to hit you more times than they don't, especially if you're trying to flame charge them. So for that, I'm probably gonna have to, um, I mean, and they're just fucking ugly. Can I say it? They don't get any cute points from me. They're just fucking little bitches, dude. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm just gonna say it like it is. They're bitches, they're hard to flame charge, and they'll usually fucking hit you and knock you off of a ledge. They have a lot of knockback on their hit also, so they'll fucking knock you off of a ledge nine times out of 10 too. Really fucking annoying. Um, I'm going D tier, or I'm going, mm, I'll go D tier just because it's really satisfying to get the flame charge on them. Like when you do flame charge them correctly, it's like it feels like you've overcome the bullshit in like a really satisfying way. So I'm, I'll give them D tier for it. I'm not going to demote them to E tier. They get D tier, but they're still bitches. Low D tier. OK, these guys, these are the <laughs> interesting enemy choice here. This is uh, one of the boat enemies from, I guess, like Wild Flight or something like that. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really have anything specific to say about these enemies. I, in fact, let me look through this list a little. Are there any other flight level enemies? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, there's like a couple of them. This list doesn't cover every enemy in the game. I'm just gonna point that out real quick. There's like a, there's, yeah, there's like the plane guys. I don't know, maybe it does, I don't know. Oh yeah, there's the train guys. Okay, so we'll look at each flight level of enemy on an individual basis. The boat guys, they're not bad. The, I will say one th thing that's cute about the flight level norks is that they're so innocent. They're just like rolling around in their little boat. They're like, ah, you know, they're like waving at you and shit. And then you come in like a dive, World War II dive bomb, like flame and like incinerate that shit, fucking kill them, make them drown and shit. <laughs> it's so fucked up. <laughs> If you think about it, you know, <laughs> these guys don't do anything and then you just kill them. So for just for the funny factor, I give them B tier at least. They're, they're not notable beyond that. It's the same way with most other flight level enemies. <laughs> All right. We got the Matadors. We got the Bull Keepers from uh, Town Square here. These guys are pretty cute. I mean, they're, they're cute. They got their little red thing. I like the interaction that these guys have with the Bulls in Town Square because it's not like it's, it's not like they have like a good grip on the bulls at all. It's like in that level, it's it, that level tells a really funny story with like the enemies and stuff. It's like the bulls have completely overrun the matadors and the matadors are all just like running away. Like, oh God, what do I do? <laughs> so I like that the game like kind of tells a story with like the enemy interaction there, even without you doing anything. So um, yeah, these guys are just funny. I'll give them a, I'll give them a B tier. I'll give them low B, I'll give them a high C tier. They're pretty forgettable to be honest. High C tier for these guys. All right, we got uh, the bulls. Now, the bulls are definitely like, these guys are the stars of the show for sure. And you can do a really cool damage boost off of them as well. Um, if you guys were watching my stream yesterday, you'll know that I went actually all the way out to the outer mountains outside of uh, Town Square, which are actually like not part of the skybox. There's physical mountains that you can go to outside the perimeter of the level. And if these guys didn't allow me to, to damage boost up high into the air, then uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So these guys have some cool like little tricks you can do with them to get a lot of height. And um, they're not bad. Another thing I like about them, just casually speaking, is um, well, I'm going to put them A tier. I actually like these guys. I like low A tier, maybe high B tier. Let's go high B tier, to be honest. High B tier. The th no, let's go, let's go low A tier. Fuck it. Just because you can do some cool shit with them. Um, the thing about it is that I, for casually speaking, that I like about the bulls is when you charge into them, they're, they get stuck on the floor with their horns. And just that in itself is not, it's like kind of funny. And they're like, kind of like squirming. They're like, they're like, <laughs> they're like trying to get out. They're like a turtle that's been flipped over or something. Um, but um, one thing that's kind of unique actually about that is they're one of the only enemies where after you charge them and they get stuck on the floor, you get the gem, but they're still not dead yet. If you were to flame them again after that, they fully die, which is like kind of dark and crazy. Like I, you, you wouldn't really expect that. Like you would have just expected the developers to just make them uninteractable after that. But no, you can actually kill them after that for a second hit, um, even after collecting the gem, which I don't think there's any enemy in the game that's even like that. You collect the gem first, but he doesn't die. Really weird. So for the unique factor, he gets he gets the A tier as well as the other fun sort of exploits you can do on him. All right, uh, cannon guy, cannon fuck in the chat, dude. Fuck these guys, dude. Oh my god, they're so annoying. They're not that bad to be honest. Um, it's just their cycles coming out of Cliff Town are annoying, and trying to flame charge the guy going into Dry Canyon is a fucking bitch and a half. Um, I will say it's funny when you first enter Peacekeepers. I'm gonna put these guys in like. In like D tier, who cares, you know? No, I'll put them in C tier. No, I'll put them high D tier. They get high D tier for me. Um, one thing I like about them is when you enter Peacekeepers, there's two of those cannon guys pointing at each other and just shooting a ca uh, cannonball into each other's cannon, which always made, made me wonder as a kid, like, is that possible to do in real life? Can you have like two, like old, like Civil War style cannons like shoot a cannonball into the barrel of the other one and then that one shoots the cannon back into the barrel of the first one that would be fucking sick if there's like a video of that um okay next guy we got the fucking jester right here mm. i don't have much to say about him they're boring mm. low c tier i mean they're not even that cool that yeah, low c tier whatever same th these guys are also annoying, but these guys are extra annoying because these guys don't actually give you a gem. These guys activate the platforms to raise and lower, and they're 
unnecessarily difficult to hit. If any of you guys have tried hitting one of these guys in Dreamweavers casually, you'll know that there's actually, many of you guys don't know this, but there's actually a weird glitch that sometimes happens where they run even faster than they're normally supposed to. So sometimes you'll see them do like an insta, like, woo, woo, and they go like, woo, 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 and they're like, woo, 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 and the, it's, they're fucked up sometimes, and they glitch to go even faster than they're supposed to. It's, it's really weird, these guys, and uh, yeah, as a casual player, they're, they're really fucking annoying. As a speedrunner, they're really fucking annoying. I'm putting them in the E tier. I don't like them at all. There's no redeeming qualities about them. Um, I will say you can do Flora Flop on one of them, but that's not enough of a redeeming factor to do a, to do a higher tier. So we got the gun guys, the AK-47 guys in uh, Nork, pardon me, in Twilight Harbor. And they're wearing the Che Guevara uh, beret, which is pretty funny as well. They're like guerrilla warfare fighters. Um, I, I appreciate these guys. Um, you know, as a casual player, they're really annoying to deal with because the, the Dorito bullets they shoot have a bigger hitbox than you might expect. Like you have to jump over it, like full jump over it. You can't like get close with it or else you will get hit. Um, so yeah, these are definitely punishing, but it's the end of the game. It's Twilight Harbor, so I don't mind that they're punishing. Um, I also like that it's a gun, again, and this is like some shit that you just can't do in video games anymore, is like have a, have a realistic gun in a rated E kids game. So just for like the kind of symbolism of the times, I think these guys ha definitely hold a special place in my heart. They also are, whoa, just from a gameplay perspective, they're fun to just flame charge. And once you understand their movements and their cycles and you start really being able to like move quickly through the level, despite their like wacky fucking shooting, these guys are not bad. I, I think they're, I think these guys are enigmas um, of their time. So for that, I'm going to put them in the B tier. I mean, they get a good B tier for me. Next up, we got the helicopter guys from Icy Flight. There are a few helicopter guys in this game. There's Icy Flight, and I think some other levels as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Maybe it's just Icy Flight. Anyways, uh, the Icy Flight helicopter guys, I mean, I, they're very like, who cares? You know, like who the fuck cares about these guys? E-tier. That's all I have to say about them. All right, we got the fucking, <laughs> this is one of JX's favorite enemies. The fucking JX has an emote of this guy smiling. The little devil archers. I, I always thought of these guys, like, as a kid, they always reminded me of, like, uh, cupids. That's what they are, cupids. Like, the fucking Valentine's Day, like, guys. But they're, like, a devil version of the cupid. It's, it's a very, like, in interesting character design. Uh, very, like, otherworldly and dreamweaver either. They're kind of scary, dude. They, kinda, they definitely have the nightmare fuel thing going for them a little bit. Definitely points for nightmare fuel. Um, or I should say minus points for Nightmare Fuel. I feel like Nightmare Fuel gets lower on the list, but it's bonus points in terms of rememberability. You know, it's however you want to look at that. But on this list, Nightmare Fuel puts you lower on the list. Um, you can do some cool damage boosts with their, uh, with their shots, but honest to God, these guys are more annoying than they are fun to deal with. You can't flame charge them. They're, they're, um, their hitbox stays active after they die, so it's hard to kind of quickly move. You can't flame charge them and the hitbox stays active, so it's really easy to bonk on them, really easy to get shot, and really hard to do quick movement around them. So, um, overall, I'm gonna have to go E tier with these guys. To be honest with you, they're not they're not great. They're, they don't have much redeeming qualities. All right, we got the little dogs. We got the little doggies. I love these guys, dude. These guys are so cute. They're just like, <laughs> and when they run towards you, sometimes the dogs in Dark Passage here, they'll run towards you, but then they won't even do anything. They'll just run up and they'll just be like, <laughs> and they'll just let you just destroy them. Or they won't do anything at all. They'll just sit there, just the, like the philosophy dogs they are. So these guys are cute and funny. And then they turn big and like scary. So I don't know. I, I like these dogs. I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in the. Uh, I like. I'll put them in high C tier. No, I'll I'll put them in low B tier. They earned it. They're cute. <laughs> yeah, they have a very iconic death sound. It's pretty funny. All right, Barrel Guys from Nork Cove. These are the guys that pick up the TNT and metal crates and fucking throw them at you and shit. They're just annoying. These guys are just hands down fucking annoying. I mean, you, the good news is that when you flame them, you can go inside their hitbox and to grab the gem. So you don't have to wait for them to fully die, thank goodness. But man, trying to work with their cycles is a fucking pain in the ass. 
Uh, sometimes you'll get gem RNG, that is the direction the gem shoots out from them, will vary, and so you'll think, and you can't see because it's inside of his character model. So you'll jump into him thinking you're going to get the gem, but you miss it. It's the same thing with the yellow guys up here. That happens sometimes. Um, these guys are, are a real pain in the ass. I'm putting them in, uh, not F tier, but definitely E tier. They're not, they're not good. They're, they're, I could do without those guys. Also, I'm going to move the yellow keck down to the bottom of the... Yeah, bottom of the A tier. Honestly, I might put them down to B tier, to be honest. And move the doggies. Move the cute guys up to A tier. Yeah, I'm liking this. All right, moving stuff around. Put this guy at the top of B tier. All right. We got the big fucking fat wizards. I'm going to move shit around like a bunch, by the way. We got the big fucking bitches here. Um, these guys are annoying also. Like, there's just so many just, like, annoying enemies. They're not, like, bad, but they're just annoying. Like, these guys, you have to get so close to them in order to flame charge. Um, it's just really fr It's hard not to bonk on them when you're trying to flame charge them. And you'll think, you, you'll think for sure that you flame charge them, but you miss. Or sometimes they'll, you know, if you fuck up your movement a little, they'll hit you with their little shot. They're, they're more annoying than they are fun, but when you do execute well on them, it is satisfying. I'll give them like low C tier, whatever. All right, we got the gun guys right here. We got the little blast, blast boys here. I like their glasses. I never noticed they had such fucking drip with the glasses. They're fucking killing it. This little tank that they're in, it reminds me of like Ape Escape. You guys know how like the enemies at the end of Ape Escape like are in like little tanks like this? That's what this guy reminds me of. Um, he, they're not hard to deal with. Um, but again, if you fuck up, they will punish you really hard. I'll put him, I'll put him bottom of C tier as well. Okay, we got the fucking, uh, these are the little boys. These are like the mini barrel boys from, um, Cove. These guys are more fun. These guys are cool. I don't, I don't mind them. They're cute. They're fun. Um, they do, they are annoying sometimes. Like, um, like the four of them going down to the bottom area of of Nork Cove near the end. The four of them on top of TNT crates, it's really annoying to try to get all their gems to home in, but besides that, these guys are cool. I don't have anything against them. They do slow you down a bit because sometimes you have to hit their boxes and stuff, but I yeah, am low B tier. They're cute. Okay, the gem burglar. Gem burglar, easy S tier. The easiest S tier I've ever given in my life, and let me tell you why. So Gem Burglar is the one of the strongest, among the strongest enemies in the entire game. And he doesn't even attack you. And he is found in the first home world. Like the very first time you spawn into the game. This guy is right to your left. And he runs away from you, but he has, the thing that makes him crazy is he has three health. Now, that may sound like not a big deal. You know, do you got three health? Like, what's the significance of that? You gotta remember, almost every other enemy in on this list, literally every other enemy here dies in one hit. You know, with the exception of the bulls. But even then, you know, you still get the gem on the first hit. These gem burglars at the start of the game take not two, but three hits to kill. By the way, the bosses down here, one hit. I mean, unless you count the multiple cycles, but even then, they'll only be like two times you hit them during like a boss stage. Even Nasty Nork, you only flame him twice on that level. So if you think about it, the gem burglar is a buffer enemy, the nasty Nork. He's a fucking badass. He's a certified Chad. And he's just chilling in the first home world, like hanging out with the gems. Like, I love this guy so much. He's amazing. Yeah, he's a fucking tank, dude. He's an absolute unit. <laughs> All right, now these guys are absolute nightmare fuel. I, I think that these like flower guys, flower muck ass dudes, from Jock, I think they, um, I, I think they're meant to like almost, you know what they remind me of? They remind me of the Vortigaunts from Half-Life 1. You guys know what I mean? This game came out around the same time as Half-Life 1. So it doesn't surprise me that maybe that there was some inspiration from like the alien-esque races of the, of, of that game, uh, here. But yeah, they really, they hit me the same way like an alien mob would look in like an early PlayStation game, you know? Um, and the flower is just, the flower's weird. What, what's up with that fucking flower? They don't do anything with that flower. It doesn't like boost them or do any like magic or anything. They literally just smack you. <laughs> so I don't get the flower. It's a very weird, very odd enemy. Very odd enemy. It makes me kind of uneasy and definitely nightmare fuel as well. I'm going to put him down in the D tier. Low D tier, possibly high E tier. This guy's, guy's kind of whack. Actually, I'm going to switch the uh, this guy. 
and this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Why did I put this guy so low? I'm gonna put him in the in the high D tier. Yeah. Put this guy a little higher. Okay. Next, I'm gonna save Nasty Nork for last. We got the uh, grenade guys from Haunted Towers. Uh, these guys are, you're gonna hear me say this a lot, they're pretty fucking annoying. <laughs> Can you tell I've been speedrunning this game for eight years? <laughs> yeah, these guys are pretty fucking annoying. In fact, these guys are so annoying that it was thought to be like unreasonable to do the current route that I do in Haunted Towers where you leave a lot of enemies alive outside of the wizard proxy area. Um, it's thought to be better to clean up some of those guys um, with the supercharge and then clean up the rest of them later. That is slower, but the reason why people choose people have chosen to do that in the past is to um, avoid dealing with these grenade guys. Because if you're not like quick with them there, uh, they'll fucking hit you with the grenade. But, you know, I'm quick. If you're quick enough, they're not a problem. They're really not a problem. I, eh. They're more annoying than they are good. I'll give them high D tier. Uh, I'll give them low C. I'll give, you get a low C tier. Low C tier for those guys. They're not bad. They're just not good. Uh, hold on, leave Nasty for last. I'm gonna put Nasty, like, at the back down here. Alright, we got the... There's, all, there's like, a million of these, like, standard Nork mobs in this game, you know? If you noticed. Um, they're just, like, small, chargeable. You know, they take, like, a minute to do whatever attack they have. These guys... This guy is literally just like the grenade guy. Just, like, with a gun, basically. And, like, a metal shield. You know? It's like, they're literally the same thing, you know? So, low C tier. <laughs> this is the mo this is the basic defenseless Nork mob that you find at the very start of the game. And these guys are so great because when you see them, when you go close to them, they're just hanging out. Like when you're not close to them, they're hanging out with each other, just chilling, like whatever. Like, yeah, we're in artisans, yeah. And then you get close to them and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> and they fucking just start running. They're like, I'm out of here. <laughs> and they finally get to the last point that they run to and then they just start fucking cowering and just pissing their pants like right there in front of you They're like, please don't fucking kill me. Please don't do it <laughs> These guys are awesome. I'm giving them definitely not S tier, but they definitely get a high A tier. They're fucking legendary Almost S tier. I, I kind of want to give them S tier I'm gonna give them high A tier for now. I might bump them up later. They're fucking legends. All right, I'll give them S tier. Everyone's saying S tier. I'm giving these guys S tier. These guys are, these are all legendary guys here. Yeah, S, I gotta give them S tier. I gotta give it up. Also, another thing I'll point out about like the character design of the enemies and uh, artisans is that they all run away from you, which is as a three year old kid, I was three years old when I first played Spyro 1. Uh, the concept of like getting killed by an enemy in a video game was like really scary to me at that age. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that. If you have like deep memories of like when you're a kid and like, the concept of adversity in a video game was always something that scared me. Um, just as a little kid, you know, who doesn't fucking know. Um, so the fact that the enemies run away from you in Artisans, I think is a big, like, subconscious reason of why I liked Spiral 1 so much. And, again, I'm st I stuck with it all these years later. Just an interesting thought. Anyways, um, we got the uh, druids here uh, from Magicrafter. These are the guys that go like, wow, 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 while they're lifting up and down the platforms. They're fucking cute as fuck. They're pretty funny, honestly. I'll give them low A tier. These guys are tight. <laughs> These guys are tight. <laughs> Those guys are based individuals. Great sound design, hilarious. Really good, actually, environment design with these guys. They actually physically manipulate the environment around you. Um, and not like in a cheap, shitty way where like the environment is like part of the character model. Sometimes you'll see that in games, like uh, in Sly Cooper, for, for instance. The There's like dogs on like on leashes that are like attached to a pole in a uh, mugshot's turf. And those dogs will like try to run at you, but they're like stuck by the pole. If you kill them, like I think they the whole dog and pole like, it, like disappear, which kind of takes away from like the whole environmental aspect of it. Um, with these guys, when you kill them, Whatever they were manipulating just goes to the, a solid state and that's it, you know? In a way, it's like you almost don't want to kill them. It's like, I want to keep like hanging with them on, in their weird, wacky, like, you know, moving, spinning world, you know? Those guys are tight. I'm gonna give them high A tier. All right, we got the thief. Uh, are there other thieves? Okay, so we got the green, let's just see what thieves we got. We got green, red, and then the blue ones. So we're gonna do these back to back. 
So we're gonna start with the uh, with the blue ones. These are the one, the normal ones that you'll see just throughout the whole game. And as a kid, as a casual player, I always found them really annoying to deal with because it's like you're chasing them and you can't reach them, and you're you fucking suck at the games. You don't you don't know how to flame charge. So it's they're really annoying casually. Um, like probably just from a casual standpoint, probably like D tier or E tier or something, you know. Um, but once you start getting good at the game, um, you can start to do like cool animation skips on them and there's like a quick kill for like every single one. So there's a lot of skill, I think, involved in these guys that like gets kind of displayed in the way you approach them. And um, and each one is unique. And so I, I like the Thieves in Spiral 1. I think they're, uh, they're a cool like little little microcosm of like your skill level and you know, your general familiarity with, with the game. So I'm gonna put them in, uh, and they're iconic too, dude. They're iconic. Like, Spyro 1 wouldn't be the same without the Egg Thieves, you know? Like, with a lot of these enemies, it's like, you know, it'd be the same game without them, you know? It'd be some other enemy or whatever. But with these guys, they're too iconic, you know? Like, I can't just say, like, they're whack, you know? Like, fuck them. Um, I almost want to put them in S tier, to be honest. But, but, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking... Yeah, I'm thinking low S for these guys. These guys get low S. They're too iconic not to make it into the S tier. Honest to God. It wouldn't be the same game without them. But as for these other thieves over here, like the red one and the green one, these are the ones that are in um, treetops. And yeah, they're all right. I'm glad they're there. And they're kind of cute also. Um, but they're, they're a little more forgettable. I'll, I'll put them low A tier for those guys just because they're cute. I like their colors. All right, we got the wizards from Magic Crafters. Whoops. I'm gonna have to put this up alongside the wizards from, um, from what's it called, uh, Haunted Towers. They're basically the same enemy, just with a different skin. Um, and in fact, I might put these guys a little lower on the A tier. I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put them like, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the monkeys. I'm gonna move them around, I'm move shit around a little bit. Yeah, have, have it like this. I like this, I like this so far. Yeah. Okay, Jock. The probably the most nightmare fuel boss out of them all. Jock is looking like a fucking some kind of weird ass shit, dude. I didn't even know what a Jack in the Box was when I was a kid, so I never understood like what he was supposed to be. Like I learned what a Jack in the Box was because of like nightmares from Jock as a kid. Um, this enemy is just pure evil and pure scariness, and he doesn't make noise either. He just makes bouncing noises. Also, he doesn't like have like a like a screech or a roar or anything. He's just weird. I I don't like Jock. Jock just I just Jock makes me feel like uneasy, and I I don't like him. Like what the fuck is he supposed to be? He's got like human arms, like a jester, but then he's got like some fucked up green like. He looks like a failed science experiment, you know? He's like some mutant shit. I'm putting him in the F tier. I fucking hate. I don't like Jock. I don't like Jock. Mm. Okay, so we got the little mini Shemps from Dr. Shemp. Now these guys have some interesting lore behind them actually. If you think about it, these are smaller versions of Dr. Shemp and there are also big fat mamas in Dr. Shemp that are that act kind of as like parental figures to them. She like slaps them and like makes them go. So they like answer to the mamas as if they were, as if she were their mom, maybe? Well, if she's the mom, then who's the dad? Well, it must be Dr. Shemp, right? Because they look like mini Shemps. So it, it's an interesting bit of world building where it implies that Shemp is having sex with like 10 different mamas in the level. There's like, there's like a bunch of mamas in this level. He's on the craziest BBW like fucking orgy you've ever heard of like, your, your whole fucking life. And he has fucking impregnated all of them to create all of these mini Shemps. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever fucking thought about that? So just for that bit of world building right there, um, I'll give them, I'll give them low B tier. I, I don't, for, okay, lore aside, um, they're interesting the way you manipulate them also, because, um, depending on how you approach them, they'll approach you from different directions and run off the mountains, so create some interesting speedrun routing situations, so, they're, they're just an all-around interesting and fun character. I, I, I like them. Um, okay, so we got the shrub guys right here. Uh, these guys are fucking bitches. I hate them. Uh, F tier. 
Yeah, they literally have everything bad about enemies in this game. Let me show you down here. Literally everything bad about these uh, about this game is like is is shown in these fucking guys. Um, it's basically like you can't flame charge them. Uh, they if they eat you, they have the longest. I'm a speedrunner. They have the longest uh, damage animation of any enemy in the game. I think it's four and a half seconds long that they chew you up and spit you out for. Um, they're really erratic. It's hard to manipulate their AI in a way that you know they're gonna charge at you a certain time. They do like a little like shaking like charge up and then they go at you and you never know when they're gonna come at you. So there's a lot of reaction that's involved in them. They're just really unpredictable and really annoying. It's like anytime you get eaten by one of these, you feel like you get punished for not having done anything wrong, basically. That's that and I hate that, you know? So F tier, fuck those guys. All right, we got the little uh, metal guys right here. Uh, these are the guys... These are the guys with the sword. Now, I'm curious. Yeah, there's the electric pad ones down there. So the guys with the sword aren't that bad. I'll give them, like, you know... I'll give them high D tier. You know, just because when you miss them, it's annoying. But the guys with the electric pad, these fucking guys can go fucking die. I hate them so much. I hate them so much. Because they're literally cycles the enemy, basically. It's like... They're just a glorified cycle keeper for the electric pads underneath them. And the fact that in Terrace Village, if you make, if you have one bonk for the first half of the level, that you have to wait an extra three and a half seconds for the next cycle because of these guys. Um, I just think that's like an unnecessary punishment. I don't think that's like good. Um, and the other annoying thing is that it's really hard to time the end of the, uh, of the charge pad cycles, because if you're just a smidge too early, you will get shocked. You have to be like very safe about it. So, low E tier. I don't like them. Not quite F tier, but low E tier. Alright, we got the little mini AK-47 guys. These guys are awesome. I fucking love them. Um, they don't really- they're not- they don't cause much of an issue. I like them. I'll put them at the top of B tier with his uh, other AK-47 brethren. I'm like a cute little family. I like that we put like the- like the similar enemies together. I like them. Alright, we got the mama from Cliff Town, y'all. The fucking, uh, the queen bitch of this game, dude. These guys, these mamas are hilarious. Um, I like, even though you can't flame charge them, I like that their character model, like, gets pushed back whenever you hit them. That's not really something that happens with, like, the yellow guys over here, or what's, like, another enemy that has a big, like, these big fat guys right here. They, they don't, uh, move backwards when you hit them. And so that's annoying because you can't grab their gem out of the air if their, you know, hitbox is too big. So, but the mamas do move back when you hit them. So that's good design by the developers there. They're sexy. Gotta give them the BBW bonus. Um, and then we have the fucking cauldron right there. And so, they have a cool little bit of environment in integration. I, I like the mamas. For as a, if, even though they're annoying whenever they slap you, there's even cool scraps that are based around the slapping, like in Vortex. So, all in all, this, the mamas have more going for them than, uh, have more good than bad going for them, I would say. I'm gonna put them... I'm gonna put them around here. I wanna demote the yellow kex to like the bottom, to like high C tier. I don't like the yellow kex. Actually, I'm demoting them to D tier. <laughs> I fucking hate these guys. <laughs> yellow kex suck. All right, we got the fucking, uh, these little sword boys right here. These guys are unnotable. I'm putting them in, in C tier. Nothing, nothing to say about them. All right, we have Metalhead. Metal fucking Ged, dude. Our boy Metalhead. Um, Metalhead's a fucking annoying boss, to be honest. I mean, if you want to go by health, I mean, if you consider each one of his pylons health, he does have the most health of any boss in the game, but I don't really count it like that. It's like, he really has two health, because you, like, damage him, quote-unquote, twice. So, it's, I would say the Metalhead fight is more annoying than it is fun. It's, it feels like a chore, the Metalhead fight. That's what I don't like about it. It's like, it's a cool idea, I think, the pylons and all that, but... It just isn't executing in a way that's... Maybe if there was, like, supercharge in that section, or if there was a way you could, like, bring supercharge from earlier in the level to the pylon section and, like, do some cool strats like that, it'd be more interesting. But as it stands right now, it's, it's really... It's just dry. It's really dry gameplay. You know, uninspired sort of shit. So, uh, I'm gonna put him down in, like, D tier. Maybe E tier? I'm gonna go E tier. Top of E tier, Metalhead. <laughs> Look at this picture of the turkeys, dude. <laughs> That's a fucking iconic turkey picture right there. <laughs> he's like, he's like, <laughs> All 
<laughs> the turkeys are funny. The annoying thing about the turkeys is that they fucking will dodge you so much. It's like, if you're not ready for a turkey, it'll just completely avoid you. Uh, they're really annoying. For They're like as cool, they're like very far on either end of the spectrum because sometimes they're cool because they, they can fucking like levitate you, you know, or what is it, do the, do the elevator glitch on them where you like go up into the air. Uh, there's like fun strats like that with them, but on the whole, they're pretty fucking annoying. They also auto uh, flame charge, which is a rare uh, property in, in enemies in this game. Uh, so, I don't know, man. I'm gonna I'm go... For, for, for after all of, all of the dead runs missed to like missed turkeys, I, which of them there are hundreds for me. After it's all said and done, you know, through all the pain and all the excitement, they get a low B tier. I, I'm gonna give it. To, I'm gonna give it to them because they're cute. They make a funny noise. They're not that hard to hit. If you have good game sense, they're not hard to deal. The, these enemies, that whole Turkey Island right there, um, it really rewards like uh, someone who studies like the game. You know, like someone who's like, all right, I know exactly to do this, this, this. If the turkeys are on this cycle, or if I'm on this route, then I know to collect the turkeys later. It like really rewards the analytical mind in this game. Turkey Turkey Island does, I think, in 120% at least. Uh, yeah, the, tur the turkeys, they get a bad rap, but they've grown on me. I'll give it to the turkeys. Be here. You're not going any higher than that, though, you turkey bitch. What is, what is this, Thanksgiving? All right, we got the fucking rams from Stone Hill right here. Um, I don't care about these enemies. These enemies are forgettable. I'm putting them low. For any just whatever forgettable enemy, it's like C or D tier. In fact, I'm putting these guys down in D tier. Fuck them. Don't really care. Didn't ask. You know? All right, we got the big fat thumpers, dude. From fucking uh, Dark Hollow. These are the guys that, like, when you go up to them, they'll just bounce you with their belly, like, boing. <laughs> And then also, also, uh, sometimes, this is like rare that this happens, but it can happen. If you approach them a certain way, they'll just stop and just roar at you for no reason. They'll just be like, <laughs> and they'll just keep doing their thing. So it's really annoying in a speed run when they do that, but just casually speaking, they're really cute and funny, I think. They're just a really funny enemy. They don't damage you. They're just walking up and down their little hallway, just boinging you and shit. I, I gotta give them A tier. They're just tight. <laughs> They're funny, dude. They're like, they're just a funny enemy. <laughs> Boing. And then roar. <laughs> no, and then he'll roar at you and then he'll like shake his head. He'll be like, roar. <laughs> and then keep doing his thing. Like, what the fuck is the shake all about? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they're the homies. All right, we got the shepherds right here. Shepherds from Stonehill. These guys are, are a unique enemy because they're also in Toasty as well. Um, they're unique because in the NTS, this is the only version specific difference for an enemy in Spiral 1. Um, besides a couple of reskins, I think. Um, in the NTSC version of Spiral 1, I think there is an unintentional mechanic left in with the Shepherds. I think you're supposed to um, bonk on them when you charge into them. But it is, po you can't, you just, you just kill them when you charge into them. And why does that seem unintentional? It's because for every other, every other enemy that you can charge in this game, the gem will automatically home in. But with these guys, when you charge into them, you get what's called like an NTSC charge, where the gem still pops up in the air and it doesn't home in no matter what you do. So it kind of leads me to believe that it's like an unintended mechanic to leave the charge in there. Furthermore, you can't charge them in the PAL version, kind of solidifying that like version difference. Um, really unique sort of thing there, but that's more of a developer oversight rather than a character trait. Um, besides that, I mean, they they do have a, what's it called? The dog proxy is possible because of them, in part. So that's kind of cool from a speedrunning sense. I don't know. Overall, these guys don't really do it for me. I'm going low C tier. They have some redeeming stuff. Like, if you wanted to, like, really, like, give the benefit of the doubt to, like, their version differences and, like, the little details like that in B tier, sure. But I'm leaving them in C tier, personally. They, these guys, I don't give a fuck about. All right, the Snowball guys from Ice Cavern. Oh, you didn't know about the region differences? Dude, I'm glad to, I'm glad I could teach you guys some shit. Hopefully, you might be learning something about these enemies. I, I'm glad to help for all the nerdy Spyro fans out there. So these snowball guys, um, I don't mind them. 
I don't mind them. They're they're actually pretty cool. The the way they're set up in Ice Cavern, it, it makes for like really fun, fast paced movement. I think. Um, so I don't mind them. They all they these sorts of guys. If you're on a good like run, these guys will all just line up beautifully for your flame charges. So I'll, I'll put them in lo in like the high B tier. These guys get high B tier for me. They're really they're really uh lenient, easy to flame charge. I like them. Uh, all right, here are the fucking uh, guys in the small version. Is there a big version of these as well? Okay, so this is going to be... There's not a big version, so we have to go for... Um, we have to consider these guys in their small and big version. Uh, big version is hilarious. Big version is probably like an A tier of them just going like... <laughs> That's iconic. Small version, they're just sitting there like... <laughs> they're just like looking around like, what the fuck is going on? These guys are kind of funny. I gotta give it to them. They're pretty. Th I'm gonna give them. I don't know if I can give them A tier. I'm giving them B tier. They, they get B tier. There they are up there. I can't give them A tier. They're not that cool, but they are pretty funny. So they get they get B tier. Mm. All right. So we got the yellow fuckers with the um, with the birds from Dry Canyon. These guys are kind of annoying to be honest. They can hit you really quickly, so you have to like be on top of your shit when you attack them a little bit. And they don't flame charge, so for that reason, I'm, I'm probably going to go D tier with those guys. Here's some other snowball guys. Uh, kind of forgettable, nothing good, nothing bad about them. C tier. Here are the big purple guys from Ice Cavern. Um, C tier. Whoa, what the fuck? Oh, just a second. C tier. You can't flame charge them. I mean, yeah, there's nothing really special about them. C tier. Maybe even D tier. I'm gonna go D tier with these guys. Yeah, he, he belongs with the yellow guy. They're basically like the same enemy. Okay, now these guys are tight. I wish, I wish the, here, let me show you above my webcam here. I wish the yellow guy and the blue guy that I put into D tier here functioned the way this blue guy that I'm holding from the Wizard Peak, I wish they functioned like the way this guy does. Cause even though this is a bigger enemy, um, you can flame charge him and um, he has a kind of a lenient sort of hitbox. So you can do a lot of really fast movement around these guys, which makes which makes Wizard Peak a really satisfying level to uh, go through quickly. Whereas with Dry Canyon and Ice Cavern, like these similar character archetypes um, end up slowing the level down because you can't flame charge them. So just for that difference alone, these guys get like pff, uh, maybe A tier. I'm gonna go A tier. I'm just gonna do it because like these enemies, they're not the easiest to flame charge. So like when you see someone on a good pace and flame charging these guys well, it's like, you know, they're really practice. You have to practice your flame charges to be able to get these guys. So definitely these are the type of enemy that like sets apart like the serious players from the not so serious ones. These guys are, are sick. I like them. All right, we got the sword guys from Dark Hollow. Um, they're iconic, sure, but they're... Oh, also a cool like detail. Here's a fun little Easter egg fact about them. You, if you see on the tip of his sword here, there's a little bit of blood. They actually removed another version difference. Actually, I didn't, I didn't think about this with the other guy, but another version difference is that there's no blood on the tip of his sword in the PAL version. I think there's like a version of Spiral One where they take away the blood from uh, from the tips of their swords. Isn't that interesting? Uh, a very minute detail, but it doesn't get him any higher on the list. I'm putting him B tier. Okay, we got the big fat fucking monkeys from Treetops. Monkey. Hmm. I don't really like these guys per se. I'm going D tier. That's a D tier enemy if I've ever seen one. Okay, we got the fucking <laughs> we got the fucking uh, armors from uh, from Haunted Towers. And the one you're seeing here in this picture is in its laying down form, but I'm gonna judge this on all of its more like you know when it's standing as well. And the armors, very similarly to these blue guys, they really are a test of your flame charging skills. You can flame charge them, but it's not easy. Um, the blue guys behind here are a lot easier to flame charge than these armors. In fact, these armors are some of the hardest enemies in the game to flame charge, especially when they're in their uh, um, laying down state like they are in this icon. So um, if you're good at flame charging and you have like a really good idea about routing and pushing movement, it can make Haunted Towers into a really fast level which I, I like that aspect, that it really rewards like a high degree of practice and discipline, these uh, these armor guys, you know? If you're not highly practiced in Spyro 1, you're not gonna be able to flame charge these guys that easily. 
Um, I'm gonna put them in the A tier. They are annoying at times, but they're they're an A tier enemy to me. They really, I love the enemy. You can imagine from my perspective as someone who's practiced the game a lot. I love when an enemy rewards your skill level. You know, uh, rewards you practicing it, rewards you practicing like the approach and the flame charge. And that's exactly what the armors do. When you get good at Spiral One, you can you can try you can flame charge every single one in the level, like quickly. But if you're not good at Spiral One, you will miss every flame charge. So it, it turns into a whole different level depending on the skill level. I think that's really cool. Um, okay. You're good at Spyro? Why? Because you flame charge those guys? Yeah, there's a little bit more to it than that, I will say. When it comes to being good at Spyro. Okay, so we got the TNT guys from Cove. I fucking hate these guys. Um, didn't we already review these guys? Where did I put them? I put them down in like D tier or something, didn't I? Am I tripping? I thought I already reviewed these guys. Oh no, it must have been the little guys. Right? Am I- wait, hold on, am I smoking gay weed right now? No. They- we have the fucking little guys up here. We have the normal- these are like the same enemy, basically. This one just has metal on it. Yeah, like, who cares? I fucking hate these- I hate all these guys. They're E tier. Hate them. In fact, I'll put this one in the F tier. I fucking hate this guy. No, no, E tier, E tier. Let's be fair, let's be fair. F tier, like, E and F tier- F tier is like enemies that the game would be like better without. E tier is like these these enemies are annoying and I don't like them, but I you know like I would I would be remiss to remove them from the game, you know. Let me put the fucking these guys in F tier. <laughs> I fuck the little flower guys. Okay, so we have the windmill, or what is it, the tornado guys. We're getting north to, near the end here. We're getting north of the end here. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking with these guys, I like them. You do have to get close to hit the flame charge. Uh, they're pretty cycle dependent. It is annoying when they start their attack and hit you before you even see it. Uh, but for what it's worth, they get a they get a high C tier for me. These guys get a high C tier. Maybe r almost, almost B tier. I see low B for me. All right, we got the choo-choo train guys. I love these guys. They're so cute. Again, just like the other flight level enemies, they're just so innocent. They're just like, they're like, hi. Ah. They're like waving their arms. They're like, ah. then you just come in, and just blow up their fucking train, kabooshed. You're fucking dead, bitch. Give me those points. <laughs> B tier. Not quite A tier. B tier. I might put them in A tier. They get A tier. No, no. Just because I've lost so many runs to missing trains, like, I I definitely have some B tier. You're not going any higher than B tier. <laughs> choo choo. Love the noise they make too. Okay, these are the vultures that stand next to the yellow guys. And they're they're annoying. They're I'm putting them with the yellow guy. D tier. I I don't like the vultures. Um, there is some cool tech you can do with the vultures. You can charge them from underneath. Um, depending on the height of the platform of their little like pole that they stand on, you can do flame charge jumps if they're higher than uh, charging length. They're, they are really lenient with the hitbox. So I'm thankful for that. But it doesn't mean they're like a good enemy. They're fucking annoying as shit, especially in Clifftown. Hate the vultures. Every speedrunner hates vultures in Clifftown. So D tier. Okay. Um, blowhard. This fucker. Mm. The thing that I don't like about Blowhard is that his hitbox is kind of inconsistent. Um, you're supposed to only hit him on the yellow, his like yellow little dick that he has. Uh, his like little flag underneath his hat. But it's like, it doesn't always feel like it works. You know, it's like sometimes he'll just miss and he'll be like, excuse me, you know, and you'll lose a shit ton of time. I fucking hate that. Um, the level itself is cool. He's not that annoying. D tier. <laughs> Get fucked, bitch. No, I'll give him low C. Nah. What are you guys saying? C or D tier for Blowhard? I'm saying D tier, personally. High D tier for Blowhard. This man is literally a carrot in a hat. The fun fact, the Japanese name for the level Blowhard is Hurricane Hat. <laughs> Pretty good name. Alright, we got the doggies. <laughs> we got the classic picture of the doggy fucking Spyro. <laughs> This is an iconic picture. The doggies are annoying. 
Um, just casually speaking, having to flame them twice, but then the second flame, if you do it too quickly, they'll still have invincibility from the first one, which is so annoying. Like, as a speedrunner, I'm trying to, like, play quickly, so, like, it's just like a crapshoot whether they have invincibility on that second flame or not. And, um, yeah, they're, they're more annoying than they are fun, but in Vortex, you can do a really cool proxy off of them. I'm giving them D tier. I I kind of want to go E tier to be honest with you, but because because dog proxy exists, I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give them D tier, no more than that. Yeah, th yeah, they're like a high D. We'll go high D, right there with blowhard, right below blowhard. Okay, we got the lamp post guy. These guys aren't even hardly enemies. These are more like. Um, aspects of the environment that you interact with. You, they, you don't get gems from these guys. These are like non-enemies. Um, but as for the mechanic itself, where you turn on and off the lamp, it's it's an alright gimmick. Uh, nothing that really makes me that stoked as a returning player, though. It's just whatever. Uh, D tier. Okay, we got the plane. We got specifically the uh, thieves in planes, which you only find in uh, Nasty's loot. Um, so thinking about those two enemies, the two plane enemies, you can get pretty cool quick kills on them. Another good showing of skill is if you can get those quick kills consistently in runs. Um, that saves you, if you can get the two quick kills, it saves you like 10-20 seconds, you know, compared to someone who doesn't. So, I like that there's the skill aspect to them. And they also look pretty funny, just driving a plane. I don't know what it is about it, but they're funny. Uh... I'll, I'll throw him in B. I'll, I'll give I'll give him the the B. Give him the B, dude. Doctor Shemp, this guy is sick as fuck. Top of the A tier for Doctor Shemp. Doctor Shemp is a fucking king. He almost made it to S tier. Doctor Shemp is a fucking legend. I I don't have anything else to say. He's Chad. He's the Chad of A tier. He's like the benchmark for people to reach in A tier. I don't have many enemies in S tier. I almost want to put Shemp in S tier. In fact, I might want to put Shemp and the Mamas in S tier. Just so they can fuck. Just straight up. Nasty Nork is in F tier. Nasty Nork is a piece of shit bitch. And I hate him. Um, worst boss fight in all of video games. The, na the Nasty Nork of boss fight is probably the worst part of Spiral 1. I'm just saying. It's the most underwhelming end to any like amazing video. The whole game is so good. And then the boss fight is just such an underwhelming. All right, you beat the game. Congrats. It's like, the fuck? So whack. So whack. Um, Toasty. Mm, he's all right. I'll give him a C tier for Toasty. I'm raising the Mamas and Shemp to S tier. I'm sorry. They're too iconic. They're too fucking iconic. They are fucked. They're so. They need I remind you? They fucked. These two guys fucked to create this enemy. All right. There's deep lore to it. Okay. I had to do it. I had to raise them up to S tier. They're too, they're too amazing. They're too hilarious to not put there. Let's see if there's any other enemies I want to move here. We got the booty bandits. We got the, the gem burglar. We got the scaredy cats. We got the fucking egg thieves. We got Shemp and the mama. Uh, what else? <laughs> the doggy fucking Spyro. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to put the train guys in A tier. <laughs> In S tier, excuse me. <laughs> Just because they're funny. <laughs> they're funny when you kill. They're like, choo choo. They're like, hey. Kaboosh! You're dead, bitch. I love that. <laughs> uh, who else? And I'm going to promote these guys to S tier as well. The fucking boing. Roar. <laughs> These are enemies that I just fucking love. These are just great enemies. Just hilarious. Like, if they're not fun to kill, they're just, like, fun to interact with and to take a look at and be like, what the fuck is this guy anyways, you know? A lot of enemies, as, like, closing thoughts, almost all these enemies, like, you're just going past them quickly, but when you take a second and you stop and you're like, man, what the fuck is this guy doing anyways? You're just looking at their idle animation, they're like... Like, what the fuck is this guy all about? Like, pretty almost all the enemies in this game are fucking hilarious when you just take a second and just look at them in the game. Um, so for that, I want to say, like, th th all these enemies are S-tier on the funny level, if we're being honest. These last few S-tiers I added were just for funny level. But that's the enemy tier list, you know? I got a, a few, few cute iconic guys in S-tier. 
It's got some good, legit, good, fun, cute enemies in A tier. I got the, some of the more whatever, but fun to interact with enemies in B tier. I got the really whatever enemies that are just like whatever, just forgettable in C tier. I might bump this guy up to B tier. Uh, we got the enemies that I could do without, you know, in D tier that are, that they're like, okay. You know, they're like the D tier enemies are okay. I don't fucking like, it's not like they're not ruining my day or anything, but they're just like, they're less than impressive, you know? Move this guy up to C. And then the E tier is like, I don't like these enemies. And then F is like, I really fucking hate these enemies. These and for one reason or another, these enemies are just a sore on Spiral 1. So that's the whole tier list right there. Did you agree with what I chose here? If not, feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what I fucked up. And I hope you guys enjoy these tier list videos. I might do another one in the future. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment about that as well. But until next time, guys, I'm Deo, and I am chugging for life, getting world records, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Ah, balls.